Hello everyone. Today, I'm going to talk to you about 8 symptoms you should never ignore when you have diabetes. These symptoms we are going to talk about today are extremely important not to ignore. And let's get started. Now, before we start, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, and share this video. So, number one is disorientation. Disorientation means you don't feel like yourself. If you're experiencing dizziness, slurred speech, or just looking like this, check the blood sugar right now. If somebody doesn't make any sense, is cursing you, or appears not there, probably they're diabetic. Well, that's a problem. That may be, we call this disorientation. And if that's the case, you need to check the blood sugar because low blood sugars can present like that. It doesn't always have to present with shaking, sweating, the classical symptoms we talked about. So, disorientation is one of the common things, especially in the elderly. Number two is chest pain. Now, why does chest pain is a symptom of diabetes? No, it's not a symptom of diabetes, although sometimes metformin can cause chest pain or some medications can cause chest pain. But when you have chest pain, you have to be extremely careful. Don't assume it's reflux, especially if you have high risk factors. What's the highest risk factor for? Cardiovascular disease or heart attacks? You guess it right, diabetes. So when you are diabetic, especially if you're a male above 40 and you're female above 50 with diabetes, and especially if you have risk factors such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, you are basically a ticking bomb time clock. So basically you need to pay attention to every chest pain you have, especially if the chest pain is in the middle. It's a pressure like preventing your breath right, especially if you're moving and the chest pain is worsening. These are absolute no-nos you have to pay attention to. Now, numbness and tingling on your feet. This is number three. Don't you say it's just a little thing, a little numbness? Well, guess what? People come to my office, first time they see me, they say there's a little numbness, little tingling. And the next thing I know, that they lost a toe or they get an amputation. You just saw me like a couple of weeks ago. When did you lose your foot? And they're like, I don't know. I just saw a little hole in the bottom of my feet. By the time I got to the doctor that it was my bone and boom, the foot is gone. Now, I don't want to scare you guys here, but diabetic neuropathy is not something to ignore. So if you have numbness or tingling, make sure you take care of that. Now, how do you take care of that? You have to make sure you watch, you monitor your feet yourself. It's better to look at the bottom of your feet, if not every day, at least twice a week, three times a week. If you cannot get to the bottom of your feet yourself, have somebody look at it for you. But it's actually important to monitor the numbness or tingling is the first sign of not feeling the skin right. And when there is a problem, normally we feel pretty much everything on our skin, and if you are not feeling it, the bacteria will get in there, you'll not even have an idea by the time it's to your bone. And that may be detrimental. So if there's a little redness, little blister, you have to take care of that, that moment. The next one is blurry vision. Now, blurry vision can happen when your blood sugar fluctuates too much or if your blood sugar comes down from 300, 400 to 100 very quickly within a week or two, you may have blurry vision. Sometimes it's actually a good sign that your numbers are coming down, but sometimes it can be a sign of diabetic retinopathies there and you have to make sure that diabetic retinopathies are taken care of, which is diabetic eye disease. If not, they can cause blindness by causing retinal detachment by causing all sorts of bleeding in the vitreous hemorrhage, etc. So, extremely important to see your doctor, especially when you have blurry vision. It is not something to ignore because your eyes are precious. You do not want to give up on your eyes just because you want to ignore a little blurry vision here and there. Number five is urinary problems. If you are urinating too often or you are not urinating at all or you're wetting yourself, these are problems that are commonly seen as part of diabetic neuropathy. We had a diabetic neuropathy video. You may have watched it if you have done so already. We talked about all sorts of diabetic neuropathy symptoms. So it's there. But the bladder problems, one is overactive bladder, which makes you urinate too often, and you may not even get to the restroom before you let it go. And the other one is overflow incontinence, where your bladder doesn't even work at all. 
In this case, it's just called overflow, so you're going to be like basically losing urine without even knowing. So these are signs of diabetic neuropathy. These are also not to ignore because it can lead to urinary tract infections and sepsis and so forth. It can get really complicated, so make sure you take care of that early on by controlling your blood sugar and seeing a urologist. Now, number six is fruity odor or smell in your breath. Now, more important for type 1 diabetics, but it happens to type 2 diabetics as well, especially if you're on SGLT2 inhibitor, which are Jardians, Farxiga, and Vicana, Stiglatro. These are the medications that actually increase the risk of diabetic ketocidosis. But also, if you are insulin deficient, you may increase your chances of diabetic ketocidosis, which can lead to actually death. So if your blood sugars are high and you are having this foodie odor, you have abdominal pain, you know, you have breathing problems, you're breathing heavily, etc. Do not wait. You need to go to emergency room. Now, what's interesting with this also, if you're on Jardians or Farxiga, Invacana, etc., you may actually have okay blood sugars and you may still have DKA. So if you have, again, abdominal pain, shortness of breath, fruity odor in your breath, these are the things you have to pay attention to and not wait before you see your doctor or go to the emergency room immediately. Number seven would be the abdominal pain. Now, abdominal pain can be pancreatitis. And remember, pancreatitis is common in diabetics regardless of the medication you take, or you may or may not take medication. So pancreatitis is inflammation in the pancreas. What are the symptoms of pancreatitis? Severe abdominal pain right in the middle. It's right under your sternum, right above your stomach in the middle. It feels like somebody is stabbing you and it goes all the way back to your back. And it also associates with nausea and vomiting most of the time. Some medications slightly increase the risk of pancreatitis such as ribulsis, ozempic, trulicity, and bigerian, and so forth. These are, we call them GLP-1 agonists. Overall, they are great medications, but maybe once in a blue moon. I see occasional patients who end up with pancreatitis shortly after starting these medications. So you have to be careful about the signs of pancreatitis, and again, you don't have to be on medication. If you have diabetes, you may have pancreatitis anytime. So these are the symptoms because pancreatitis can develop into severe necrotizing pancreatitis, which makes you end up in the intensive care unit. And if you do so 20-30% occasions ending up in the intensive care unit end up dying for pancreatitis. So that's another sign that you don't want to ignore. And the last one, the eighth symptom or sign that you should not ignore, and that's the bonus one, is the leg pain. Now, who did not have leg pain in their life? Everybody gets leg pain most of the time. It is ignored. People say it's my knee or it may be whatever, I walk too long, whatever. But remember, diabetes is very high risk for peripheral arterial disease. What does that mean? The arteries in your legs can be blocked. And it's extremely common, especially as you get older. And if you have diabetes, if you're a smoker, if you have high blood pressure, if you have high cholesterol, I can tell you 90% chance that you have some sort of arterial disease. Now, what happens when you ignore that? Well, if you develop a sore at the bottom of your feet or anywhere in your leg, it is not going to heal. How can you heal a lesion if you do not have the nutrients and oxygen being carried to the dead area? So that's why people lose their toes, they lose their foot, even sometimes below knee, etc. Because they do not have enough vascular supply. So if you have leg pain, especially when you walk and you start hurting, don't say it's my knee, don't say it's my ankle, whatever. Let the doctors decide. Get your pulse checked. There are certain tests called ankle brachial index, duplex studies, etc. that doctors can do to identify a blockage in your arteries. So, remember to subscribe, like, and share. We'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far. And I hope you subscribed already if you didn't do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.